In an exclusive interview, we're hearing for the first time from the grandfather of a toddler who died after falling from a cruise ship window. Salvatore Sam Anello is charged with negligent homicide in the death of 18-month-old Chloe Wiegand. In Puerto Rico, an emotional conversation, he begins to answer questions about his role in Chloe's death, including new details about his health, which may be critical in court. We also have new information about surveillance video shown to CBS News last week. Our lead national correspondent, David Begno, is following the story. David, what have we learned? Good morning to all of you. That video that was shown to us by attorney Michael Winkleman, who represents Chloe's family. Uh, he does not represent Mr. Anello in this criminal case. That video is somewhat different. We reported initially that it showed Anello and Chloe appearing to walk up to the railing, which looks similar to this one, and that Mr. Anello looked down out of the window for about a second, that he picked Chloe up and held her over the railing for about five seconds. Turns out it was longer. The video shown to us was not in real time. The grandfather actually looks out the window for about eight seconds. That he reaches down, he picks Chloe up, and he holds her over the railing for nearly 25 seconds. Prosecutors believe that was reckless. Attorney Winkleman says the video that he showed us was the same format that he received from prosecutors. In a statement, he told us any variation in time likely has to do with software issues. Most importantly, whether it was 5, 10, or 30 seconds does nothing to change the fact that Sam reasonably believed the window was closed. Yesterday, my producer and I flew to Indiana to sit down with Sam for his first interview. I saw her fall. I saw her fall the whole way down. I saw her fall, and I was just in disbelief. I was like, oh, my God. And then I just remember screaming that I thought there was glass. And Walk me through what you remember. All right, so she's down at the, looking at the, out the window in the glass. So I bent down by her, and then we always, like, when you're, whenever we're at a hockey game, we would bang on the glass, and it was fun, you know? So when I knelt down to uh, be with her at that level, I couldn't reach the glass, really, only with my fingertips, so I knew she couldn't. So that's when I decided I'd pick her up. So I... You know, was trying to stand her on a railing, and it happened in seconds. Can you show me how you were holding her? Like, was it kind of a bear hug, or was it? Kind of, yeah. I was trying to hold her like that, I, I, from what I remember. I had her, and I was trying to knock on the glass. And at that point, I'm like, well, I'm going to have to lean further for her to be able to reach it, right? Because I thought it was further out than I expected. You had one arm around her and the other arm you were trying to knock on the glass? Yeah, at one point, yeah. Okay. And, and I think that's the, t the point where she slipped out of me. I, at no point during that whole incident did I think that, well, she fell out. It, it was like, it was unbelievable. It's like it disappeared. It's like the glass disappeared. I don't know if there's a feeling more helpless than watching her fall. No. And realizing you can't. It just seems like it's so not real. She's such a beautiful little girl. Perfect little girl. Smart little girl. Smart, smart little girl. That everybody should have been able to know. That everybody should have been able to know. The video that CBS News saw, and I saw myself, appears to show you holding Chloe above the railing and over the railing. I have to think a juror who watches that may think that was reckless. Not knowing that there wasn't a glass there. If somehow I thought that she was going beyond the glass, I they wouldn't have done it. I would have been appalled. I wouldn't mess around with Chloe in a that kind of, or anybody with that dangerous kind of, n never, never. If there was some kind of warning sign there, we wouldn't have even been near it. We wouldn't have even been near it. Anello at that point asked to pause the interview so he could take a sip of water. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. 
still I'm okay. I have, I have to tell you, and I don't know how much you have been following uh, the news, but in posting the story, people that I've seen comment on this don't think you should have been charged. Whether, you know, they find me guilty of whatever or not, it's inconsequential because of what has already happened is so horrible. Some of the people who've been on the boat have written to me and said, David, the windows are tinted, and so it is pretty easy to recognize that it's open. I am colorblind, so that's been told me. That's something that... Uh, you are colorblind? I'm colorblind, Dave. I don't know. I just never saw it. I've been told that that's a reason that it might have happened. Who do you blame in this situation? I, the more and more days go by, you know, initially, I couldn't, I couldn't help but blame myself, but I know that, I know that I, if there was a sign, if there was a, something that indicated there was a chance for that window to be an opening, that this wouldn't happen. So... You blame the cruise line? I, I, I do. It's hard to, you know, yeah, I want... I just want them to fix the boat. Just fix it. Just fix the boat. What was your lowest point? I don't know if I've reached it yet. What's keeping me going now is the process right now, and when it's over, regardless of the outcome, I think I'm going to need some some help. Mr. Anello is due back in court on December 17th in Puerto Rico. He faced his three years in prison if convicted. You know, the little girl's mother told me last night that she actually asked Puerto Rican prosecutors not to go forward with the case, and Chloe's mom is actually a prosecutor, so she understands that decision of whether or not to prosecute. I should tell you the family attorney actually showed us medical records after the interview that appears to support Mr. Anello's claim that he is colorblind, and clearly that is going to be a part of their defense. Chloe's parents plan to file suit against Royal Caribbean before the end of the year. In a statement, the cruise line called it a tragic accident, but said they would have no further comment out of respect for the family and because there is a lawsuit coming. How does this case go forward, David? Look, prosecutors are not going to back down. It's been made very clear to us. They believe Mr. Anello was reckless. They believe the video is crucial, and they plan to pursue the trial. Prayers to that family. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. All right, very David. hard to watch. Thank you very much.